Hi everybody and welcome to the next episode of the New Normal Podcast. It's myself, Gavin. I'm here with Eddie Mulrooney, who is the owner-curator of Self-Employed Ireland, uh, which is selfemployedireland.ie, uh, which is a platform to allow self-employed um, individuals come together in a form manner. Uh, welcome to the show, Eddie. Good afternoon, how are you? Good, and yourself? Oh, I'm good. We're relaxed here. I'm at home. Where's home? Home is Sligo, ah, very down nice. the wild Atlantic Way. And a bit quieter than usual at the moment, yeah? Uh, exceptionally quiet, yeah. We would have a lot of surfers um, down our neck in the woods, and uh, there's nobody at the moment. Oh, well. So I said a lot of guys out there who were really frustrated with not getting out, <laughs> yeah. like, like the rest of the country, I suppose. It's a good place to socialize, to be socially isolated on the waves, though. I think so, yeah, but they're not allowed to travel. And they're all, they come from over. All over yeah. Ireland to come to this little cove we have down here. It's a kind of secretive. Um, Come this, Larry. Just as somebody listening, I'm sure the big surfers would know. Uh, it's not for the faint-hearted. Um, these guys surf, so okay, they, they come from all over, and the waves are good. Uh, brilliant. All right, so um, Eddie, where, where did the idea come from around self-employed Ireland? Um, well, for a long time, I felt that. Um, the small guy, small business guy was, was very much isolated. There's plenty of um, support out there for the big firms from IBEC and Small Firms Association, the Irish Farmers Association, uh, more industry all have their own. But there's nothing there for the small guy uh, to support him and to lobby on his behalf and talk to the government and, and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I've been working on this for about four months, uh, just trying to get the platform built. And um, so we just rushed it out, you know, it was nearly done, ready to go. It is right now. Uh, we have a lot more to do. And what we want to do is just get the uh, businesses, uh, everybody, not just the, the small guys, but, but everybody who's, who's in business online and chatting. We all do it on Facebook and we do it on Twitter. We're not actually talking to each other. We're talking to a um, whole world out there and we only get so much back. And there's a lot of, um, for the want of a better word, crap being put up. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is people will talk uh, to business people and they'll talk openly and freely. And if we can get that going, then we can solve a lot of problems and help each other on the way as well. So that's where we're coming from. Yeah, I've, I've found talking to a lot of people over the last couple of weeks, the, um, the collective mentality is, is, is really coming true to the forefront everybody is actually there for each other at the moment it's uh it's it, it's it's good to see and then a, a platform to allow that is always a you know a welcome addition especially to a absolutely an, an area where business people are going to be very hit that are you know individuals within a, a larger organization so um you know you mentioned that you kind of rushed it to launch was it the the, the current situation, the, the main reason to get a launch now and to, to give people a platform. Yeah, yeah. In its, in its current format, um, uh, we, we kind of rushed. I mean, the whole idea that behind um, the initial thing was to get there maybe in June or July. So we were going to set up forums in each, in, in each county forums, um, which would have committees and members. And these committees and members would meet, business people would meet once a month. And they would decide what they need, uh, what they're missing in their businesses, what, if it's marketing they need or something else. And through the business platform or Self Employed Ireland, we would provide training. So if it's upskilling in accountancy or marketing or, or if they need to train their staff, that there'd be enough of money coming in if, if we hit the numbers to give that back to the Self Employed People of Ireland. So it's not about all taking it out and putting it into a corporate business yeah. and, and for me having it and, and board members around me having it. It's about giving back up to probably 80%. So we take out whatever it costs to run the business and the rest comes straight back into it. But okay. because of what has happened, we couldn't afford to um, go charging somebody now when all their businesses are closing down and they've, they've no money coming in. So because the platform was, was almost done, we just stripped out some of it and we, we run it as it is, just as, uh, as a platform for people to connect. The last thing I do is get people to connect at the moment. And once we connect, we can go from there. It will grow organically itself, I think, but we need the numbers and we need the people talking and you know, we can set up everything we need to set up from there. And, and just as you're talking about costs, and what, what, what is the initial cost basis for the, for the platform? It's two euros plus the VAT for six months. 
and it's ten, 10 or a month after that then plus the VAT. But that could change. I mean, if we need to, if it's, if we need to reduce it uh, back down to two euros in six months' time, we'll certainly have a look at it. But uh, for, for the moment, it's just about numbers. It's just about getting people onto the platform and talking together and interaction and engaging and talking together as business people. Because as, when business people talk, there's no bullshit really. If this is what they want, they'll say what they want. Yeah, I understand. And away, away from what's going on at the moment uh, and as we move into the, the, the kind of into the light and, and kind of in a few months, what, what are the biggest challenges for small business owners or, you know, self-employed people within Ireland at the moment? Um, there's a couple of issues uh, and the whole base around money like anything else, but I think talking to some of the businesses um, recently, and one of the big problems is the banks. Uh, a lot of businesses will survive, um, maybe if they can borrow money to sustain the business over the next 12 months until they rebuild the business and it starts coming back in. And the banks will turn around and say, right, we'll give you a loan, but we want 9%. I mean, this is crazy. This is banks who are borrowing money at, at less than 0%. And they want to rip off um, the businesses again. And these are the people who, who bail them out or help bail them out. So this is one of the issues. And this issue over rates, we think that the rates have been sorted, that, that the councils are now going to forego on, on rates for a while. And uh, of course, there'll be issues then over staff and keeping staff and, and how they're going to pay staff and, and everything else. So the government needs to step in again. But again, until we get a collective of what everybody is thinking, we won't really know the true word. Because we're only getting bits and pieces from different mediums, whether it be radio or online or whatever it is. So it's, it's, it's again, it's getting that facts, the actual facts that we need. And is, it. Is, is that one of the kind of the, the areas that you're looking to do with the platform is to get that universal voice of, of the self-employed yes. and be able to you know, lobby or to be able to go to market on that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. If we can get a, 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 enough information and enough exact uh, problems that are there, and we can take a group of whoever's m members of the platform, and we can go and talk to um, the people who are in power, the Minister for Enterprise or, or Revenue Minister or whoever holds the strings, you know, they'll have to sit and listen to us. If we can tap into 100,000 or, or 200,000 of the 300,000 um, self-employed people out there, they're going to have to listen to us, really and truly, because all of a sudden we all have a voice. And, and at the end of the day, we do employ 1.25 million of the, of the uh, employable population. That's a huge, huge yeah. part of, of, of e economy for Ireland. Yeah, I, I think at the moment, and um, probably we, we all knew about it, but we didn't think about it before the last couple of weeks about how many people are probably employed either through independent employment or through small businesses um, when you strip it back and the amount of people that from hairdressers through to, you know, video camera people to, you know, anything that's a service is primarily done through self-employment or through small independent businesses. So I think it's a, it's a great time for, for that industry to have a, a platform to be able to discuss, you know, stuff around revenue, VAT, which is probably one of the hardest things for, for people to, to navigate if they don't know it. Yeah, it's, it's, it is, it's only coming to the forefront now, really, how, how big the self-employment sector really is. Um, I mean, when government talks about announcing jobs, they talk about announcing um, direct investment people coming in from America and stuff, and they're, um, they're creating jobs for two and 300 people. But there's small businesses every single day of the week um, when times are good setting up. And they all employ two or three people or one people or one person. And, and a huge part of the economy. And now that all these places are shut down and all these jobs are on the dole, it's, it's astronomical really what, what, what we do as self-employed people out there. And we need to have the value, worth value for ourselves. And we need to give it to ourselves because uh, a lot of small businesses wouldn't, they'd probably look down on themselves thinking, well, I'm a small business, what, what good am I? But we play a huge part, every one of us. As a collective, we're just enormous. And it's just getting that across to people and, and seeing what we can actually do as, as, as a group. You know, so that's, that's where I'm at. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, no, definitely. And the, um, you, you, you touched briefly on banks. Has there been, you know, with, with, with the increase of third-party vehicles around investment of, you know, like... Um, linked finance or one of those types of businesses and um, 
is that become more of a, a, a you know a vehicle for small businesses to be able to access revenue, or is it still primarily kind of traditional? I don't sales? think. Um, I don't think the access, getting access to the problem is, is what they want in return. It's, it's, the, it's the high money, even Link Finances and the, and the other guys like them, I mean, they're all there to provide a service. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a public banking system that provides for the people. Um, so we're, we're stuck with the investment bankers that are there, the big guys and, you know, even the smaller guys, but they're all out to make profit. They don't really care about um, the big stuff. I mean, it's all about bottom line, as it is for any business. But the, the big pillar banks are the ones that we re, that really should be rolling in behind um, the business of Ireland, making sure that they get back up and running. If they falter, everything falls with it. I mean, if they, for one instance, if you take the construction industry, and um, there's a lot of new houses being built, so let's just take the electrician, and he's going out to do a job. Now, he doesn't know if the um, guy who's building the house has the money to pay him, because will the banks draw down the money? Will he have a job in, mm. in, when this is all over? So uh, they can't perceive. So I mean, this, if they don't support the businesses and don't support everybody else, then it'll all come crumbling down section, section by section by section, you know? So it's, we have to, we have to work together as a team and the banks really have to pull the weight. I, I think that comes back to government policy then as well, which I, I've personally been quite actually impressed with for the, 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 the short, time of uh, the, the, the coronavirus coming in it's been pretty effective and pretty quick so it might give you confidence that it might, it might translate into yeah, business yeah. afterwards because they need to get a lot of people back to work very quickly yeah absolutely I mean our ministers uh, and their departments have been fantastic regardless of what side of the fence you political yeah. side of the fence you're on they've been great um but it's it's when this is all over this is fine this is short some stuff that, that, that they're all doing together and, and they're all coming together you know and they're all making decisions it's, it's not just the minister for health and, and the minister mm. and, and the tea shop they've got agreement across party on, on all of this which is fantastic and maybe it's the way the government should be run um but we're not we're not going to see that happen but it's it's what happens afterwards when this when this is all over and, and it's the social isolation is is, is is gone and we start to get out there and, and the shops start to reopen will people start spending will will they get their jobs back will the factories have closed down will they, will they reopen or is it just an opportunity to, to close down permanently and there's a lot of fear there for a lot of people so the government can't control that but as small businesses together we, we can we can help each other um, maybe overcome some of that and see what's the best measures. And when we have those measures, we can go back to the government and say, look, this is what we need and this is how it should be done. This is what's going to put the country back on its feet. You know, the, the big firms, are, the pharmaceuticals are all still trading, you know, uh, right across Ireland. I mean, we have a huge amount of them employing a huge amount of people, but they're not all our em uh, employment section, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it's the people who are off at the moment is, is that we need to get back to work and the business that have closed, small shops and carpenters and plumbers and all the other guys that are the guys that are out there so and, and in relation to that you just said around the kind of you know have you been speaking to many people around the the effects that is on you know mental health and well-being and you know it's come quite prevalent as always but even more now when there's people that are you know worried that you know can they pay their staff they haven't been able to pay their staff can they as you said reopen the, the warehouses but when, when the sun starts shining again uh, there hasn't been, uh, for me, a lot of talk of it. I think um, at the moment, everybody's self-isolating, so they have their families around them, so they're cocooned in their own little uh, little world. And I'm sure, like most business people, there's all this stuff going on in your head. Uh, what, you know, how, how am I going to deal with this when this is over? And I think that's what we have to worry about. I think that's when, when the guy goes to reopen the shop and all of a sudden he just can't do it or he's not mentally or mentally able to do it. You know, he might be physically fit, but mentally he's probably not. I think that's what we have to worry about in the, in the future. Business that can't open, all of a sudden he can't provide for his family. Uh, like much of what happened in the crash back in, in 2009 and 10 and 11 and 12. And we all lost friends through, through suicide, unfortunately. And that's what we've been very mindful of at the moment is. So we need to tap in now and, and, and be prepared for it not to happen. So yeah. again, if we have the platform and we can get people talking, we can alleviate some of that fear as a group and as a nation together and people working together. So that's one good reason in order to, to sign up as well and come part.
Yeah, and that, one that struck me, uh, you, you, the, the connectivity issues, um, just as <laughs> you, you're obviously in Sligo, uh, you know, the, the broadband issues and different things like that, that will also come in relation to self-employed and remote working has come quite popular as well, obviously at the moment, but it's going to yeah. follow through. Is that something that you're looking at as a group or would you, is that something that you're, you're going to be trying to I champion? Think we, we look at everything. I mean, as you said, remote working certainly has come very prevalent. Um, but that's fine for, for the people who are in the tech industry. Uh, but a lot of self-employed, even the small shopkeepers and stuff, that won't be really a, a, a completely applicable to them. Uh, they'll become more tech-friendly and, and through video and stuff, and, and I think that's the way it's going to go. There'll be more video footage going up online, more so than just a chat. And uh, I think our, our platforms will have to adopt that way. But the self-employed people, the guys who are out in the street or, or out in the, just out and about doing their everyday work, they won't be working from home, so it won't really become that important. So it, it'd be interesting to see how it actually unfolds. It certainly has, has, has brought us forward to um, the tech industry. It's always been there. We just haven't utilised it well enough. And now all of a sudden, in the, in the space of a couple of weeks, we're, we're all becoming very, very savvy as, as to what tech can actually do for us what it could have done for us more in the past so that's that's good yeah and what what what's your kind of vision or your next steps for self-employed ireland what 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 do you what do you hope to be your kind of three six twelve month plan it, it's at the moment it's 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 we only launched on on monday morning so um it's it's hard it's nice to see it just grow that's what we want to do is just get the faces get the people on so we can actually decide which what way is, is what direction it's going to take and it won't be just that there will be um deciding how this is going to work it, it'll be the people on the platform who are actually going to decide this is what we want and this is what we need and i'll row in behind that i'm just a face behind the company but the, but the people who are on it that's the guys uh, who's, who's going to work this so it's getting people talking getting people chatting and then uh, the those who want to be in the forefront um, lobbying or talking or, or submitting stuff to government or to whatever we need, they'll come to the top and then we can pick those people out and we can, we can as a group, um, see how it's, going to, how it's going to bring it forward and lobby the government and, and things like that. So that's how I see it growing over the next weeks and months ahead. And when we get out of this and, and we're done, then we, I can come back then to the original platform of... of um, helping businesses in their own hometowns and, and putting that money that's coming into the platform back into, into, the, into the business community. Okay, brilliant. Uh, thanks, Mill, for your time today, Eddie. It's uh, been, been really interesting speaking to you. Uh, for everybody, it's uh, selfemployedireland.ie uh, is the website. I'll put all the contact details for Eddie and, and the website um, underneath the post. But um, for today, thanks, Mill, for your time, Eddie. No problem. Thank you very much. Appreciate Talk it. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.